Now, you've seen his face everywhere, maybe on your son or daughter's T-shirts, but hopefully you will soon realize why that has got to stop. Hmm. I guess we have to make a choice. Ah, Giselle in a bikini. This is how to learn about history. You see, this is the hottest supermodel in the world. What is this? This is Che. And this, too, is Che. And so is this. He's a fashion icon among his revolutionary peers. And he is everywhere. In fact, all of this is Che. Ernesto Che Guevara. There is the famous T-shirt. It is so famous, in fact, that you can buy T-shirts that have images of the T-shirt on it. Che's image, it sells beer, it sells lighters, it sells belt buckles, it sells uh, baby onesies. Why are you risking your life to fight for us? And nowhere is Che seemingly loved more than in Hollywood, USA. You'll see. When Fidel's running things, everybody will read and have food on the table. But is that who Che really was? One of the things that is fascinating about the cult of Che is that it effectively thrives in the absence of any kind of historical understanding. For example, look around at an anti-war rally and you'll probably see Che. Che was a, uh, you know, a self-taught revolutionary who was instrumental in Castro's takeover of Cuba. He became known as the Butcher of La Cabana Prison in revolutionary Cuba, where he personally oversaw the execution of anywhere from 175 to several hundred people. He's implicated in thousands of deaths that come after that. 14,000 men and boys were executed in Cuba during the 1960s. He said that his dream was to become a killing machine. He said to his uh, revolutionary comrades, if they weren't sure of someone's loyalty, if in doubt, kill him. These are the realities that we need to understand about Che. You could probably call him clinically a sadist. When you read his diaries, he goes into particular detail about when he himself shoots people in the head but it goes beyond war go to a rock concert and you're sure to see che this is a man who tried to ban free expression particularly musical expression such as rock music and jazz music because he thought it was imperialist he was the caribbean equivalent of the taliban he enforced a single moralistic viewpoint and if you didn't agree with him you would be killed one of my favorite is carlos santana at the 2005 Oscars, naturally, the Motorcycle Diaries won an Oscar, and Carlos Santana went there to play the theme song for it. Well, he was wearing a Che Guevara t-shirt. Carlos Santana was showing off the emblem of a regime that made it a criminal offense to listen to Carlos Santana music. But surely Che was a progressive and uniting force on race, right? He says, the Negro is lazy and indolent and spends all of his money on frivolities and booze whereas the european is intelligent and forward-looking this is from his own diaries yet we've got jesse jackson down there viva che we've got jay-z with a song with the lyrics i'm just like che Guevara with a bling on i'm like che Guevara with bling on i'm complex maybe he is complex Either that or this guy doesn't know that this guy would have thought that this guy was nothing but a frivolous, lazy drunk just because of the color of his skin. So what's wrong with wearing the t-shirt of a warmongering, bloodthirsty racist? Well, what if he was also a terrorist, too? To his home, to his places of work, to his places of recreation. We will attack the enemy wherever he lives. Folks, this was written in 1966. He preempted Al-Qaeda by 30, 40 years. Let's see if you can tell the difference. Which quote is from Che and which one is from Osama bin Laden? Who said that if he had nuclear weapons, he would use them against the very heart of America, including New York City? 
And who said the U.S. is a great enemy of mankind? Against those hyenas, there is no option but extermination. Yeah, it was kind of unfair. It was a trick question. Both of those quotes are from Che. Luckily, his attempts at killing Americans on our soil were about as effective as his attempts to ignite revolution around the world. We look uh, 50 years into the future, and there are only two unapologetic communist regimes, North Korea and Cuba. If they had enough nutrition in order to run out of North Korea, they would do that. They're starving there. In Cuba, we see time and again people who are so desperate to get off that island hellhole that they will swim through shark-infested waters. Che was the vanguard of the revolution. He was going to bring communism everywhere around the world. In this sense, Che was an absolute abject failure, and it's a damn good thing that he was. While Che wasn't successful in his bid for world revolution, there are plenty of people trying to pick up right where he left off. So what was it like to live in the one place that Che was successful? Find out next.